Good morning, this is Tom out here at the Tractor Rescue Ranch. Uh, there's one thing I wanted to point out that I always check is making sure there's no water in the oil before I go any farther on a tractor that's been sitting for a long time. Uh, the problem is, is you can pull the dipstick out and it looks like nice and clean oil, but there can still be a problem with water in there. So, I got this loosened. Let's pull this plug and see if we can see any oil coming out or water coming out with the oil. Well, it actually, I can't see any indication that there's water in it. That's a... That's a good deal. Means hopefully my bottom end will be all nice and clean. Okay, I wanted to pull this oil pan off and the way Ford built these tractors, they don't have a frame on them. And so this front end's got to come off before I get the oil pan pulled off. The kind of a pain in the butt, a lot of tractors, you can just drop the pan and leave everything intact. But so anyway, I've had to start here. I want to make sure to get that one piston out and that cylinder honed a lot better and make sure the spray or the rings are all clean get it spotless and I wanted to check the bottom end anyway while I got things apart to make sure we don't need some bearings or something Well, that's how to get the tie rod ends off and we'll go from there so from here you've got these arms right here that go up and hook onto the front axle and they're pretty simple to get off. So, the back of these arms, just, I've got a ball that goes in this socket right here. And so, that's all unhooked. The steering arms are unhooked. So from here, I'm going to have to go up underneath and unhook that front end. There's just several bolts there to unbolt that front end from the oil pan. The oil pan is a big heavy casting that holds all the weight. Thank you. 
Here we go with the front end off of it. Nothing less now but the oil pan. I've got the tractor blocked up on some good heavy blocks there, so it's all up in the air. I'm thinking this big cast iron oil pan is going to be quite heavy, so I went ahead and rigged up the transmission jack, trying to help pull the weight of it. And there we go, just like that. The oil pan is off. So let's look up in there. Oh, my light is so bad. Kind of hard to see anything. Anyway, I can see, looks like just a little bit of surface rust, just from condensation. So, my next step here is to pull that number four connecting rod off and push that piston up out and see what I can get done there. Boy, that, ba that bearing is bur very dirty. Sure glad I pulled things apart. Yep, that's kind of what I was expecting there. Those rings are been corroded from that rust to the point that they're all kind of stuck in there. So, dang good thing I pulled it apart. I'll pull the other cylinders out as well just to check them, but see how they look. I'm kind of wondering if maybe there wasn't a problem with this cylinder before the thing was even shut down. It's kind of looking that way from the looks of that bearing. Okay, I just stopped, knocked out number one piston and this is what things are supposed to look like. You can see how the rings are loose in there so that they're, 
they're spring loaded so that they'll go out against the cylinder end of things. And then something else I had to do. I put a little some little dimples. I wanted to make sure these all get back in their same spot. So I've got them marked number three with some little dimples, number two, and number one. That's so that I can get the pistons facing forward like they came out of it and the piston back in the same hole that it came out of. Uh, a lot of pistons you'll get are marked that way, but these didn't have any markings on them that I could see. There is some markings on them that indicates that they're the standard size. And from what I'm seeing with this piston, it looks like it's in pretty dang good shape. I think in this motor was probably either rebuilt somewhere along the way or it doesn't have that many hours on it. And the bearings in this one are nice and clean. So I kind of think that that number four had a problem before they even shut it down. We'll push the rest of these pistons out, clean everything up real nice and clean. Make sure it's all well lubed and put this thing back together, I guess. Okay, I've done about a day's work today. Got all the pistons out. Number one, two, and three all look really good. Bearings look good on them. The sleeves look good. So we're in good shape there. I had one comment asking me to do a little review or a explanation of this cylinder hone. These are really neat tools. You put them in the drill and they're spring loaded so that they just hold spring pressure on the cylinder and the way they're designed, the way they'll rotate back and forth it gives you some options so that the cylinder honing will stay true even if your drill isn't true so that's pretty neat tool for this kind of situation so anyway I'm gonna hone all of those cylinders out there the other cylinders look really good but they're kind of got a glassy look and they're and they're kind of stained at the top and bottom where the rings don't rub and then this number four cylinder I'm going to hone out real good and see how it turns out as far as the pistons I think just cleaning them up lubing them putting them back together I think they're all going to be fine except for this number four and I'll clean it up and see how things go see if I can get those rings loose on it and if not I don't, I don't know I looked on, on the internet and I found a rebuild kit for this of all four cylinders I don't know if they'll sell me just one piston and sleeve so I'm gonna have to check into that but I'm going to try to clean things up a little bit better first before I get that far with it. So, I am very confident at this point that I'm going to save this old tractor. Looking forward to hearing it run again. Thanks for watching.